This session is concerned with emotional intelligence. Now, there are various definitions of emotional intelligence in the literature, and here's one of the more famous ones uh, by Lubavitch and Higgs in 1999. Um, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, it singles out the ability to manage your own feelings and emotions, and also to be sensitive to and uh, to influence other key people, and to balance uh, one's motives and drives with conscientious and ethical behaviour. The definition you can read over later, but it's there are several definitions of the topic in the literature, and that's just one of them. So let's talk about emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence refers to the manager in which individuals, leaders and managers manage their emotions and the information surrounding them. So emotional intelligence it involves individuals and leaders and managers it involves them in managing their emotions and the information around them. So emotional intelligence is able to it's, it's the capacity to manage emotions and also to manage the information that's around the managers. High levels of emotional intelligence may be linked to successful work behavior in managers and leaders. We can identify um, good managers and good business leaders through their capacity to make sense of what's around them and to manage their emotions in a way that gets the job done without um, inhibiting them, without uh, stopping them or without uh, slowing them down. So they're able to manage what's around them, they're able to look at the information that's around them, make sense of it and be successful in their work. So they are managing their emotions, they are managing their capacities. So it's very useful when selecting uh, personnel or looking at people for career development. The capacity to be able to manage their emotions and to look at the information that's around them, look at the tasks that are surrounding them, look at the resources, look at the ways in which the work is being carried out, to look at the information around them and to make sense of that information and to assimilate the information, to be able to link it all together to make the picture, to make, to understand what's required and at the same time to manage their their own feelings, manage the when, when something goes wrong they don't get too upset or if something goes right they become too lax and too confident. They're able to balance their emotions. So Individuals who have emotional intelligence can understand their own emotions and are able to control them. So the capacity to manage our emotions is a sign of emotional intelligence. If we know ourselves, if we know our weaknesses, we know that we are, um, we get upset easily, we know that we we get too excited about certain things and we get uh, depressed if things are not going our way. If we know these things about us then we are in a better position to control them. And that means we have greater emotional intelligence. We know ourselves. And also we need to be sensitive to other people's emotions. It's not just ourselves but emotions can be infective. Uh, if somebody's feeling happy, people around that person may feel happy as well. If someone is feeling depressed and upset, other people may feel depressed and upset. So we need to be sensitive to other people's emotions. We need to be careful about how we speak to people and, and how we engage with people. Um, emotional intelligence is also the ability to socially adapt to changing circumstances. It's easy to fit into a routine 
and the routine becomes more and more solidified. It becomes more, it becomes firm over time, it becomes more fixed over time. And when change comes along, we get upset. We're emotionally challenged because the routine is gone, and we like the routine perhaps. So we need to be able to adapt to change. And that's a sign of emotional intelligence. The capacity to take on newness, to take on new activities and to look at what's around us and what's, what's happening and to be able to uh, accommodate that newness. They are most likely to be successful in an organization or as a leader or a manager. So people with emotional intelligence tend to be more successful in an organization or have the capacity to lead or to manage. If they have got emotional intelligence then they're able to take other people into account, they're able to look at the information that's around them, they're able to manage their, their own emotions. So they're ideally suited to be leaders. Now the elements of emotional intelligence well, Dulwich and Higgs, the one I mentioned at the start, introduced seven elements of emotional intelligence. So there are seven components to emotional intelligence. These elements are supported by empirical studies. They, they have been tested and papers have been published as to how effective these are or how important they are. But we're not going to get involved with that here. Uh, the seven elements of emotional intelligence should be evident in a successful leader. So <clears throat> the successful leader should have ideally all of the elements, but um, perhaps some are more pronounced than others. But ideally they should all be present. First of all we have self-awareness, the ability to self-recognize and self-manage feelings. So we understand ourselves, we understand that we're getting upset, something has gone wrong, we're getting upset, we're, we're becoming emotional. And we realize that if we become emotional we may become irrational. We may s make faulty decisions or weak decisions, illogical decisions. Decisions based on our emotions rather than on the logic of the situation that we find ourselves in. So we need to be self-aware. And we need to have emotional resilience, the ability to um, outperform when under pressure. When the pressure comes on us in work, when we have deadlines to meet and uh, machines have broken down or in the office the routine has broken down or the computers have failed and we still have to meet the deadline. So we're under extreme pressure. We need to have emotional resilience. We need to be able to cope with that. And we need to be able to perform under adverse conditions. And we need to be motivated, to have high levels of motivation. We need to desire the goals. And we need to have ambition. We need to be pushed along by ambition. So that's a desirable quality in emotional intelligence. So also is interpersonal sensitivity the ability to understand others and look at their feelings and their needs and effectively interact with the with them to to be able to take others into account by and large in business we work in teams we may work in the marketing section or in the accounts section or in the production section but we work in teams very seldom do we work as individuals so we need to be sensitive to the other people who work in the team, to their emotions. And influence, and the ability to influence and persuade people to follow them or to change a viewpoint. Influence means uh, discussing situations with colleagues, trying to influence them to your opinion, or listening to their opinions and being influenced by them. If they're 
opinions are better, uh, better researched, stronger. Um, <coughs> there's more logic in what they say than follow them. That's the influence. But be logical about about it. Don't don't get emotional, and don't put forward a position and try to defend it no matter what. If a better position is put forward, consider it. Look at it and acknowledge it if it is better. Intuitiveness, the ability to make informed decisions in different situations. Sometimes uh, we don't have full information. We, we're working in positions where the information hasn't come to us. We, we're, we're blind as to the, the, the full set of circumstances. And sometimes we have to make decisions with partial knowledge, partial information. A small amount of information sometimes. So we, we have to have the capacity to make the best of what we've got. To be intuitive. And conscientiousness, the ability to be fully committed and dedicated to goals and ethical standards, to, to apply ourselves honestly and fairly to achieving the objectives without cheating, without shortchanging the employer or the other colleagues on the team working fairly and honestly and openly. For leaders to be effective they should acquire aspects of emotional intelligence. We have seven points as set out earlier and for leaders to be effective they should have these seven points. They should be able to recognize the seven of them and uh, understand the importance of them. High emotional intelligence suggests that individuals have the ability to distinguish their emotions and effectively use resources around them to their benefit. So high emotional intelligence means we know ourselves, we know the situations, we are familiar with the, the seven points we just made and we are able to distinguish their emotions and look at their emotions, able to, to sort out what the emotions are. And by and large when we get into the emotional area we are moving away from the logical. So we need to be careful that the decisions are based on the facts, not on our desires, on our aspirations. So high emotional intelligence means being able to control emotions and work with the facts. Now some say emotional intelligence can be learned and adopted. Others say it's inborn. It's a characteristic of the individual. This is a, an old debate in psychology known as nature-nurture. Nature is what is inside us. It's what we inherited from our families. And our emotional um, capacity in the case of nature is what we inherited. Nurture, the other side of the debate, is that we can be trained. We can be trained to overcome our nature. We can be trained to be logical and to, to look at uh, situations and take our emotions out of play. But that debate uh, goes on and on. We always look to nature and nurture, which one is which one is dominant. But some people say we, we can develop emotional intelligence, we can learn it. Other people say it's it's a part of us. We have it or we don't. There are some uh, references that are used throughout this and that's all I'm going to deal with in this short session. Let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching.